So, uh, CLIPS Foundation State of the Union. So I just wanted to spend a few minutes sort of talking a little bit about what we're doing at the foundation, um, some of the new things that are going on. And one of the things to, to, to keep in mind um, as I'm going through this entire talk is that when I talk about Eclipse this or Eclipse that or, you know, the Eclipse, Eclipse Project X, Y, or Z, this is not about us or me. This is not about the Eclipse Foundation. This is about the Eclipse community and the Eclipse projects and what we're accomplishing together. So when I use the word eclipse, I don't mean the staff, I don't mean the institution, I mean all of you in the room and the community that we're putting together here um, that is accomplishing so much together. And it really, this past year has really been about building on the successes that we've uh, put together in the last couple of years. Um, you know, when, when we were here last year and we were just at that point just talking about um, onboarding Jakarta and so on, there's, uh, at, what, at that time, we didn't even call it Jakarta, EE for J and, and Java EE. Um, so that's been a big part of what we've been doing this year, and I'll be talking about that in a, in a second. But, you know, this really has been a year of growth for us uh, in the Eclipse Foundation, the Eclipse community. And, um, you know, one of the major successes that we had this year was, uh, you know, again, um, shipping the IDE release train on time to the day. Um, so the Photon release uh, went out uh, back in the was it the last Wednesday of June, just like it has for, where's Danny? How many years in a row have we done this now? 14, 13, 14 years in a row? Something, yeah, so 13, 13 years in a row, thank you. Um, and so uh, it's, it's a, obviously a huge effort, and it's really funny, there's, there are a couple of journalists that I have literally been telling this story to for 13 years in a row. Right, like, you know, the same journalist, uh, I'm thinking of a guy named John Waters, um, and every year he's just like, I can't believe you guys keep doing this, right? I mean, this is an open source community that pulls together, you know, 246 uh, committers, 620 contributors, 73 million lines of code, and we've shipped it on time to the day for 13 years in a row, right? No matter what kind of organization you are, the maturity of process, the maturity of thought, that just says so much about, about what we in the Eclipse community can accomplish. Um, and it's amazing that, that, they, that people still get fired up about this. Um, of course, all the good things must come to an end, um, and Photon is actually the last annual release train that we're doing like that, um, because as of, uh, after that, we started, we're now actually shipping um, release trains every quarter. Um, so, you know, it's like, you know, we, we did release trains every, uh, every year for so long, we, we finally convinced, uh, you know, Oracle and the Java team that they should start shipping release trains, so now they're shipping every six months, and we're like, yeah, if you can do every six months, we can do every three months. Uh, <laughs> by the way, that's absolutely not how it happened, but it makes a great story, so um, feel free to use it. Um, but no, we're, so now we're, uh, so we're going to be shipping the release train every quarter. And really what it's about is making sure that there's an, a mechanism by which we can get new innovations out to our users every three months, just by making sure that they get it faster all the time. And this is the year that we really um, got serious about repositioning the Eclipse Foundation. Um, so you might notice that uh, since the last time we were here in, in Ludwigsburg, we now actually have a new Eclipse Foundation logo. Um, you know, and so um, that's been, uh, that's been a, a big part of re sort of retelling the story of the Eclipse Foundation and really positioning the foundation itself as the platform for open innovation and collaboration. And I think that's a message that, that is really, re really resonates with people. It helps that it's true. Um, and there's so many cool things that are happening um, at, at Eclipse. And, and in terms of collaboration and innovation, and just a, you know, example, uh, you know, yesterday there was the CDT summit um, that where what, there's 40 or 50 people in the room and you sat down and you came up with a, you know, a, a really interesting five-year plan for what you're gonna be doing with, with CDT. Um, moving forward, and that kind of, and that's a perfect example of collaboration leading to, to innovation, and I think that that's a, a you know, perfect example of what we strive to do uh, here in the Eclipse community. And it's, uh, we actually went through this exercise uh, to, to measure um, how big we, we are, it's like, the, and 
part of it is like we saw some stuff from Apache and Linux and you know we're this big and we got that many it's that many billions and it's like just as an exercise so you know how many actual how many lines of code do we actually have at the Eclipse Foundation um, so this uh, they went through this exercise and 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 Benjamin Cabet did a lot of the work here and and others and and Tabung put the story together um, but we you know 162 million lines of code and using some and you can read uh, in Tabung's blog, blog post, the very conservative, you know, how we went through this, you know, it adds up to $8.7 billion of value um, that we are delivering to um, the world, um, whether you're as an individual trying things out or the, one of the largest corporations that are trying to build products, um, whoever wants to make use of that value can do so. And I think that that's uh, an incredible contribution to, um, to society and uh, to the open source, the larger open source ecosystem. And we do this through, um, through our working groups uh, in, a lot of, in a lot of cases, particularly a lot of the new stuff. And in the last year, we've, we've, si we've uh, created three new working groups. Of course, Jakarta, um, which is uh, getting a lot of uh, press because that's where all of Java EE is moving to. Um, but then there's also two, two in, in, um, um, in sort of an, in the broader automotive space. Uh, so what open mobility is focused on is, is doing sort of very fine-grained simulation for traffic scenarios in urban settings. Um, and so in Toronto, uh, near where I live, uh, they're using it to simulate traffic for a new, sub, uh, a new downtown area that they're building out with uh, that, uh, that Google's uh, subsidiary um, called Sidewalk Labs is designing in Toronto. Um, and open genesis is, is kind of really cool. It's, it's uh, coming primarily from an organization here in Germany called Tube Sud um, that does a lot of the regulatory uh, work around automotive safety. And what they're looking at is, okay, if we're gonna have artificial intelligence um, driving our cars, how can we certify that that's safe? Um, so a lot of the work in there is, isn't even necessarily software, it's doing things like, how do you verify that the data sets that you're feeding your artificial intelligence uh, auto auto uh, autonomous are, are how, how do we know that that data is safe and is traceable back to real world scenarios? Um, so some really interesting new things happening in Eclipse in areas like that. And you can see this in terms of the project proposals per quarter. I mean, you can definitely see that recently we've had a huge amount of growth in the number of projects at the Eclipse Foundation. And one of the things I want to point out is that like those three, um, those three big bars at the right, the the first of the three, which was actually Q4 2017, um, that was before Jakarta started. So that was basically sort of organic growth uh, in Eclipse projects, un totally unrelated to Jakarta. Um, so what we're seeing is basically an unprecedented growth in the amount of new projects that are coming to our community. Of course, um, bringing on uh, Jakarta and moving all of Java EE from um, from um, Oracle and, and Glassfish uh, into Eclipse Glassfish and uh, the Eclipse Foundation has been an enormous undertaking. Um, I was just reading some, I was like, f I think the code base is 5.5 million lines of source code and that excludes comments. And the TCK was another 4 million lines of code, again, also excluding comments. Um, so this is like an enormous ton of code um, that's, that's coming to Eclipse. Um, it represents basically like a 15% increase in, in uh, everything that we're doing at Eclipse. Another thing that we've uh, just recently got engaged with uh, as a community is uh, working with um, IBM for uh, Call for Code, uh, which is really about building a, a community around uh, uh, building out code solutions for disaster relief and recovery. Um, so this is just a purely an exercise in inspiring um, developers to do good um, with what they, you know, with, with what they do every day. Um, so if you're interested in learning more, by all means, drop by and uh, um, uh, the website and, uh, and feel free to propose some ideas of things that we can do uh, within the Eclipse community in support of this, this great initiative. So looking ahead at some things that, uh, that are coming up for uh, uh, next, so as we look towards 2019, um, for us at this, on the staff side of the Eclipse Foundation, what we're really seeing is uh, these, these are the four areas that we're gonna be focusing on. Um, so the first one is cloud native Java. Of course, Jakarta and MicroProfile are huge parts of that. 
Um, Vertex has been around for a number of years as a reactive programming um, a framework that's based on the JVM and, uh, and of course OpenJ9 as well. Then on Eclipse IoT, we really honestly believe that Eclipse IoT is the center of gravity for open source in IoT. Um, you know, we're uh, 36 projects, I think, now, and uh, uh, I think something like 2.9 million lines of source code. I mean, it's, it is a very large uh, and very thriving community. Uh, again, uh, you had Eclipse IoT Day yesterday and, and the Smart Home Day on Sunday. Um, it's, it's a really great community and a lot of cool things are happening. Then in automotive, uh, you know, the way we, we look at automotive is it's not so much about it's necessarily uh, the software that's running in the car and in the e whether it's in the ECUs or the, or the IVIs, the dashboard. It's really about building out the technologies that's surrounding the car. So the cloud infrastructure for connected car, um, as I mentioned before with, um, uh, with Open Genesis, it's about also looking at how we're gonna make sure that these uh, uh, auto autonomous driving systems are safe. Um, so we have a lot of different things, different threads that are happening in automotive um, at the Eclipse Foundation. And then finally, our roots and our story started in tools and it's still extremely important to us in the community. Uh, so the, you know, the Eclipse desktop IDE is still um, a very, very large presence in Java and C++ um, and PHP. Like there's, a, there's a, still a ton of developers out there, um, literally millions of developers that use Eclipse every day. Um, we have some really interesting uh, modeling tools, as everybody is aware, with the modeling community. And we have so stories like Capella <coughs> around building out systems engineering platforms on top of Eclipse. And then finally, some new and really exciting and very different um, IDE platforms in their own right, like Che and Thea, um, that are you know, building out the future of development tools. I really honestly believe, and, and we have this joke inside the Eclipse Foundation, that as soon as Mike is absolutely certain about something, it's guaranteed to be wrong, right? And I can remember saying, yeah, you're, you're never gonna put IDEs in browsers. That's a completely stupid idea. Uh, of course, then the, I think about three weeks later, the Eclipse Orion project showed up, um, and, and so, um, but and we've you know had a lot of investment in that area since, and I but I really I've come to sort of full circle, and now I, I completely believe that you know the desktop IDE, in a lot of ways, is almost certain to be disrupted, just like everything else on the desktop, um, by cloud-based tools. I think that's that's going to happen. Oh, sorry, one other, and then we, the Eclipse Foundation, is this platform that we, that, that all of these rest on. Um, and that's, so the, the folks that, uh, that I work with, um, this is what we, this is the, you know, the basic services that we provide to the projects and the communities and, uh, and our members um, in support of uh, making all of this happen. So at Eclipse, you know, Jakarta EE, MicroProfile, and Vertex, as I mentioned, are, are really, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm, uh, OpenJ9, of course, as well. I mean, there's a lot of really cool stuff happening um, uh, at the Eclipse Foundation. And uh, just the other day, we got a new project um, that I wanted to, to mention um, in passing as an, another example of some cool and innovative new technology that's coming to Eclipse. Um, so I highly encourage you to go read, it, read this proposal. I think it's pretty cool and exciting. Um, Eclipse X2, uh, which is designed to be the Java app server for the cloud um, with portability across Amazon, um, uh, Azure, and uh, Google Cloud Platform. Um, and it's based on the Java EE web platform. Of course, pretty soon we'll have to get them to change that to the Jakarta EE web, web profile. Um, but there's a whole bunch of really interesting in, uh, technology there and we're very happy that they, they came to the Eclipse Foundation. And so why did they come to Eclipse? Well, the reasons that they cite, and I think these are, these are great reasons, is they build on a lot of Eclipse technology. So they started uh, on Eclipse Jetty. Um, they use PAHO for their MQTT, uh, and they used MQTT extensively inside there. Um, the fact that Jakarta EE was already Eclipse was definitely a big part of their, their thought process. And by the way, I keep saying they, I should mention that the company that's proposing this project is called uh, CloudReach. And uh, CloudReach actually is one of the, the uh, I think actually not one of, is the largest cloud service provider in terms of helping um, uh, companies onboard um, their IT infrastructure onto public cloud. They're actually Amazon's, uh, AWS's largest partner in this space. Um, so when they, you know, they, they, they deeply understand um, this space because this is what they do um, for a living. And then finally, 
um, you know, they looked through Eclipse as one of the, as the leading uh, community to do Java technology. Um, and so that was a, a, a final part of the puzzle um, that motivated them to, to bring this to Eclipse. So I think this is you know, just another example of, you know, really exciting cloud native Java that's, that's coming to the Eclipse Foundation. I've already mentioned IoT, uh, but just in passing again, I mean, sorry, 37 projects. I think I said 36 earlier. It's, I can't keep up, sorry. Um, actually, sorry, this is already wrong because we just an hour ago, Wayne posted two more projects. So we're now we're at 39. Um, so um, and uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a large and thriving community and there's uh, a lot of great stuff that's happening there. And, and thank you, Benjamin, for uh, being the program manager and kicking the thing along for, for the f uh, five years. Um, automotive working groups, uh, so as I mentioned, there's the two new ones. Um, OpenMDM and OpenPass have been around for a while, and, and uh, OpenMDM, as I understand it from Angelica, is just in the cusp of shipping their first, uh, their first significant release, so congratulations on that important milestone. And then just to call out to, uh, you know, just uh, since Wayne updated the page an hour before I got uh, up here, and it's, it's just not a talk that I do if I'm not adding slides 15 minutes before I stand on stage. Um, so some new project proposals. So uh, MRA, M, great names, huh? UPM and MRAA. Uh, <laughs> MRA, is that they actually say? They actually say MRA, okay. I'm not sure I want to be able to get used to that. Eclipse, MRA, I don't know, it doesn't. It's not, it's not working for me, I'm sorry. Anyways. Um, so these are, these are two projects from, from Intel, and they're really about building a platform and ecosystem for low-level hardware drivers um, for, uh, for, making, um, for enabling rapid uh, um, integration of different hardware components possible from a software perspective. Um, actually, it should say Eclipse I IOTA Trinity. So anybody who's been sort of following you know, the distributed ledger slash blockchain world uh, particularly in the IoT context, may have heard of this uh, organization that's based here in Germany called the IOTA Foundation. And basically what, th what they're working on is technology which is distributed, uh, distributed ledger technology that, that came at it from a specific uh, interest in enabling it for IoT. So things like very low memory requirements, very low power consumption, um, these kinds of things were definitely part of the, the requirements that they were thinking about when they were building out the system. And so they have previously mentioned this, and now it's starting to happen, that the, the IOTA Foundation is planning on bringing all of this technology as part of uh, the Eclipse community. Um, and uh, we're, we're obviously super excited ab uh, about that, to um, have technology in that area. Um, for those, uh, actually, do me a favor, put up your hand if you are a committer on an Eclipse project. Cool. Welcome. Thank you. Um, hey, we're going to make the Eclipse development process uh, a little bit better this year. Um, so we're working hard to, um, the, main, the, main, the main design or user requirement is around uh, making it easier to do release reviews and in particular uh, make it uh, easier for projects that are constantly releasing because we're seeing that pattern more and more. Um, so if you're, um, uh, if you're uh, interested in this, you know, please grab Wayne or um, a member of the Architecture Council and, and talk to them about that. Um, I'm going to talk more about this in the members meeting tomorrow, but you know, as part of bringing Jakarta to uh, the Eclipse Foundation, we're replacing the JCP, the Java Community Process, for all of what used to be known as Java EE. Um, so we're going to get into the the business of writing specifications. Um, turns out that's a lot easier to say than it is to do. Um, it's like a million little details and a huge pile of work. Um, and uh, so we're, we're, we have a community draft of our spec process now published. Um, and uh, so if you're interested in learning more about how we're going to be doing specs at Eclipse, um, please jump in and engage there. This is not just about Jakarta. Uh, we already know that there's at least one pro uh, project in IoT that's already called Sparkplug or Eclipse Tahu that's already said that they want to start doing this as well. Um, so this is not just about Jakarta. The Eclipse Foundation is going to be working on, on specs moving forward. Um, and then research projects. Um, so we have this whole wonderful community of research projects um, primarily led by uh, Philippe Krief, uh, who's on our staff. 
Um, these are uh, EU funded programs and they really add value and help recruit um, new projects and new technologies to our, to our Eclipse community. Um, getting close to the end here, uh, so one thing I want to call out um, uh, for uh, moving forward is we want to do a better job of marketing and explaining your successes um, within Eclipse. Uh, so we've just recently done uh, this, this uh, Bosch case study, um, which is a, a, a great read about why a company as old and as large as Bosch uh, is engaging in open source. Uh, and then uh, an Eclipse micro profile ebook um, that the, the micro profile uh, group has been working on um, is just in, the, has it been published? Or is it about to be published? November 5th. Um, and, but here, um, we want to do video interviews with people about their successes with Eclipse. So if you are interested in telling your story, please uh, grab uh, at Stephanie J. Swart. Um, and uh, let her know that you're interested and it'll be you know a quick video quick video chat uh, and it's something that we'll publish later in terms of telling the telling the world about uh, the success that you're having with the Eclipse community and, and the technologies here and then uh, I think this is the last thing um, so we are doing a brand perception survey about how people when you say the word Eclipse or the word or the phrase Eclipse Foundation what does that mean to you we did this a couple of years ago and it's time to do it again. Um, so please take our, uh, the survey and, uh, and, and there's a chance that you could win a 100 euro gift card. I guess we're only planning on Europeans taking our survey or something. Uh, that's, hey, just so you know, that's big bucks if you're Canadian. Just. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so th thank you for that. Um,